Hi, this is Peggy with Natural Awakenings Magazine, and we are here today with Erica Hornthal. She's the founder and CEO of Chicago Dance Therapy, which is located in Northfield, Illinois. And good morning, Erica. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's so great to be talking with you today about dance movement and therapy and, and how they're related together and how it helps people with mental health as well as physical health um, at any point, but especially now when people have been at home for a while, many people are still at home, um, we're practicing social distancing and things are not the way they used to be. Right. What, what are you seeing out there right now, Erica? Oddly enough, you kind of see this juxtaposition of people who need to connect. And so we're finding any way to do that virtually. Mm -hmm. And then this other end of the spectrum where we are avoiding social contact, even out on the street. You know, I walk the sidewalks of my neighborhood and I joke, but it's kind of like playing the game of Pac-Man, you know, avoiding the ghosts and mm -hmm. trying not to get eaten, you know? And um, I noticed that for a while, people weren't even comfortable making eye contact. It was just so awkward. And so mm -hmm. I think now movement is more, is, is even more important. I mean, it always was, but we already lacked an awareness of how important it was for mental health. Now we need it even more because it is really the one thing that's going to keep us connected, connected to ourselves, connected to others and connected to our environment. So as a dance therapist, um, as a movement therapist, what do you do? How do you tie it all together? At the heart of it, we are all movers. Dance is most often seen as this aesthetic, this skill, this art form. But what we tend to forget is that dance at its just very basis, right? Form of expression, movement, is really the original way that we all communicated before we had any type of verbal language. Um, you know, think about even when we're just starting out in this world, that's how we communicate as babies. Everything is through movement and nonverbal communication. And that's still very apt today as we age, as we become adults, but we tend to forget that most of our communication is in our bodies. And so dance movement therapy is actually concentrating on the fact that most of our communication is nonverbal. It's the tone in our voice, it's the inflection, it's the body language, it's the posture. It's such a small percentage of the words that we're actually saying. Um, and that's really the point of dance movement therapy. So it's not, it, I mean, it can be, but to kind of take any judgment and assumptions and stereotypes and stigmas out of it, at the heart of it, it's just about moving, how, how you are moving, how you're not moving, how much you're moving, how well you're moving, and how it all connects to how you function emotionally, you know, physically, socially, spiritually, cognitively. And I, again, I think like now is the time that we really need to be focusing on that. So we want to talk about things. We want to talk about what's on our minds, but oftentimes what we're going through is just too deep for words and we have to mm -hmm. turn the body to, to get answers. Yeah, it, we're all so stressed right now. And people who've been frontline workers, exceptionally stressed, mm -hmm. people with children at home that have been teaching them and trying to do their jobs, people, you know, all of our situations. Um, so how does working through stress with dance and movement as, as a therapeutic practice, how does that work? I mean, you just kind of hit the nail on the head for me. Um, I fall into that category. I'm you know, a professional trying to, you know, uh, work in the therapeutic aspect, helping people through this pandemic and through just their lives in general. I have two kids at home. We're doing e-learning. One of them is an infant. So, I mean, like just trying to figure out this new normal was already really difficult. So like, for me, what that looks like, you know, not that I'm doing therapy on myself per se, but I always say, you know, practicing what I preach, what that looks like for me is one, recognizing and noticing how my current status, my mental status, my mood is impacting my body. And when I just stop and notice and I'm more aware of it, I can tell, um, you know, maybe my body is closing in. I don't feel like I have space to breathe. So my breathing is shallow. And it may not be something that I can do in the moment, but if I recognize it and then I take a few moments later when I do have the capacity or the space to self-care, 
I can mm-hmm. make sure I take some deep breaths. I can make sure I expand into my atmosphere. I can stretch my body. I can go for a walk if I'm able to. So it's recognizing these cues that our body is giving us that's saying something's not right, right? You're, you're not coping with things the way you could be. Mm-hmm. And your body is, is showing you. It's signs and signals. It's oftentimes why we're in pain. It's why you know, we have these what we call psychosomatic symptoms, manifestations in the body from something psychological or stressful that we're feeling. And our go-to is usually to mask it or to cover it up or to use a temporary, you know, fix. Um, And we don't usually ask, why is this happening? What's going on? What am I feeling? So from a movement perspective, you know, it's just about starting to be aware. Just notice how your circumstances are impacting your body and how your body is impacting your circumstances. And then furthermore, from, from this therapeutic aspect of dance and movement, you know, we're seeing people on TikTok and dance challenges and choreography, and it looks like entertainment, but it's really meeting this very primitive need to express ourselves and to try to relax, calm, or just validate what our nervous systems are feeling. Animals shake. We don't. We tend not to shake things off. We bottle them up. We push them down. We say it's not a big deal or we minimize our circumstances. So, you know, even just the practice of noticing and then shaking it off, literally letting your body release some of that built up tension can help reset our nervous systems. So how so from a, from a dance movement therapy, how would you shake it off? Literally shake I mean, like I've had my clients, I'd I'd say, you know, where are you feeling your tension most? Start there, you know? And so maybe it's our chest, it's tight, you know? So it's just like, start, start shaking your shoulders, start, you know, moving back and forth. If that's not accessible, just, you know, shake out your hands, shake out your legs, bounce your knees. Um, A lot of us can relate to just sitting still, you know, quote, still, but having that leg shaking syndrome, yeah. you know, or like jittery. <laughs> yeah, or the foot's um, going the whole time. Yeah. Exactly. You know, make it almost like, what if you just had a cup of like ca- caffeinated coffee, right? You feel a little jittery. You're like, let your body match the rhythm or the intensity of the mm-hmm. emotion that you're feeling. Um, some people say, oh, I'm not motivated. I don't want to move. Well, then start off slow, you know, and maybe it's a really, really slow stretch or um, music can really support that too. Maybe play a, a piece of music that you can relate to and see how you can move your body to the music. Um, I often will tell my clients, just take a piece of pen and paper and start doodling. I mean, that is movement, you know? So just get your body used to some movement by just doodling on a piece of paper. Um, and then for those of us that are really connected to dance, you know, have a dance party. Put on some music in your kitchen, in your living room, in your bedroom, and just just dance it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's not about what it looks like, it's not about yeah. being good or videotaping it and putting it on Facebook. It's just understanding and realizing that once you do that, your body feels different. Mm-hmm. Your mind feels different. Yeah. So again, it's just meeting this inherent primitive need to move and express our bodies and words alone don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. What about those of us who work at a desk much of the day, especially the people who've gone from their offices where they may have had ergonomic furniture to working on their dining room table um, and you're slumped all day. Mm -hmm. Or even just trying to accommodate the Zoom feature. You know, it's like, wait, can you see? Oh, you have. Can you see me? Right. You know, but your shoulders are forward (laughs) and your neck pressure and your arms and shaking out does so much. But I I know you've talked about posture as well and, and movement that way. Yeah. Um, you know, again, to me, the big piece is awareness. So it's almost like doing a pre and a post test, you know, before you hop on a zoom call, notice how your body is. Are you already tense or are you feeling pretty good? And you're like ready to take on this meeting. And then depending on how long the meeting is, you know, if you can check in in the middle, great. If not, when you end that zoom call, step away. And again, notice your body. Are your shoulders hunched now? Were you just, you know, staring at an awkward position? Is your back, you know, just, just notice, just take notice. Cause Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like to be in anybody else's body. So for me to say, Ooh, my back is really stiff now. Maybe yours isn't, maybe you are sitting in an ergonomic chair. I'm not, (laughs) you know? So, um, I say, take time to breathe, drink some water and stretch. Um, sometimes it's moving around, you know? So if you don't have the possibility in front of the screen, but you can take a break, go walk around your house. Um, 
you know, breathe in whatever fresh air you can when possible. So again, it's not this dance aspect. It's just how have I been holding my body and how do I need to change that so that I can allow thoughts and feelings and emotions to run through my mind. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's not a new, really a, a new way of looking at things. It's just for us because we're so unconditioned to it. <laughs> We have to remind ourselves, oh, I'm a body. Oh, I need to yeah. pay attention to yes, it. Yes, we're supposed to sit in meetings and pay attention the whole time. Yes. Right. I think the other thing, too, is like give yourself permission to do it on your meeting. You know, I mean, be a good um, a mentor, uh, a mirror, you know, be a good example for whoever you're talking to on your call. And you can even say, you know, my back is really stiff right now. I'm just going to stand up, you know. You can continue your meeting. I mean, yeah. yeah, maybe they'll be looking at your belly button for a, you know for a few minutes, or step back, you know, and do the meeting standing up. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of these talks, and I realized that sitting down was not always best for me. So I found a, a way to use my phone or prop up my camera so that I can mm -hmm. stand for some of my interviews yeah. and some of my calls. And you've got because more you, energy standing too. Right. Like, often. don't let your environment shape your body. Let your body shape your environment, and that's a Kind of a different way of looking at things. Well, one other question I wanted to ask you about: um, What about movement for people who are more movement challenged? Either they have some physical limitations, they might be older, um, perhaps they have a, a chronic illness. Mm -hmm. How can how can we help them, um, or how can we help ourselves if we have those conditions to have more of a movement therapy? Yeah. Again, it's a not a new way of looking at things, but an unconditional, out of the box, I think, way of looking at things. We really need to look at what is what is possible, what we are capable of, because I feel like as a society, we tend to dwell on what isn't working. Mm -hmm. You know, I've lost my memory. I've lost my movement. I can't use this. I can't use that. And we need to understand that. Like, we need to recognize that because we want to validate those feelings of loss and grief and change. But from a movement standpoint, it's not going to allow us to reach our full potential if we continue to sit in the no's and the can'ts and the won'ts. So for the individuals I work with that are physically or even, even com uh, cognitively, let's say, compromised or, or different, we start with what we can do. You know, what is your body capable of in this moment? And then all of a sudden we start to validate Oh, okay, my, my fingers can work today. Okay, my wrists can move. My face can move. My chest can move. I am breathing. I am here. Oh, there's that knee that doesn't work for me very well. Okay, but now I can bring some compassion to it. You know, I've had clients, so many clients that are um, partially paralyzed or maybe they've mm -hmm. suffered a stroke. And especially when I go into a facility or like, you know, nursing home, so many times it's like that person can't use their right side. And so that says to me, oh, okay, I shouldn't be engaging the right side of their body. But then I'm limiting an entire half of that person. So I understand from a safety perspective, they want to tell me that. But I go in and I, I, don't, I don't say that. I just say, let's move our arms. You know? And then, then the person will say, I can't move this arm. And I say, well, that's, that's okay. That's how it is now. But you wouldn't believe how many times when given the opportunity, that person uses the good arm to mm -hmm. pick up the bad arm. And then that becomes the new norm. So maybe my left side isn't independently moving, but what can I do to move it myself? Can I, you know, lean into it? Can I pick mm -hmm. that arm up with my good arm? So, yeah. to speak? so we really need to look at possibility. We need to look at what we're capable of and start, start to reframe it from that perspective. Because if we sit in the can't, won't, shouldn't, don't want to, aren't able to, that's all we're ever going to see. And we're going to keep limiting our bodies, which again, limits our minds. Yeah, you're still getting some movement and, and who knows what will happen after that point. Right, yeah. that becomes the new norm. And I'm not going to say that a paralyzed arm becomes unparalyzed, right. but oftentimes what is capable of that arm or what we're able to accomplish goes away altogether because we're not even trying. You know, so um, to at least get some range of motion or tactile stimulation is something. It's better than pretending mm -hmm. it's not there, you know. Yeah. So for people who want to connect with you um, at Chicago Dance Therapy in Northfield, mm -hmm. um, 
how, how are you operating right now? How do they reach you? Are you having classes online? Mm -hmm. um, our sessions are, for the most part, online right now. Um, we do offer insurance, you know, we take insurance. So a lot of our clients are able to continue to use their insurance because okay. many insurance companies are, um, you know, accepting telehealth right now. Um, we are not currently doing community groups, although I realize the community is going to be starting to open up again. So that is how we've done it in the past. We go into nursing homes, hospitals, day programs, schools. Um, for anybody in my area, so obviously our, our studio is in Northfield. Um, I'm used to traveling outside of that region. If people are willing to travel to me, I've actually been seeing some people in my secluded backyard so that we can socially distance, I guess I should say physically distance, but still have that in-person energy um, because while Zoom is great and telehealth is a wonderful option, it's not the best option for everyone. So after a few months, my clients are like, can I come see you? Can we do this outside? <laughs> sure, why not? Um, and, uh, and then just virtually, people can always connect with me through my website, ericahornthal.com. I'm pretty active on social media, Instagram, Facebook, again, Erica Hornthal, or they can always look for Chicago Dance Therapy, which is just chicagodancetherapy.com. Great. Thank you. And we will put that in the notes along with the Zoom as well. So thank you, Erica. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, every time I talk with you, I, mean, I have to make sure I'm sitting up straight and <laughs> I've got, mindful I've of my movement here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And um, we will talk soon. Take care. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.